Hello, my name is Logan McCoy, and I am the Vice President of Services for CCB Technology. I'd like to thank you for joining me on today the third of four installments in looking at Microsoft's Office 365 solution. Specifically today, we're going to be looking at Microsoft's OneDrive application as well as their SharePoint application. So for many users, when you're going to be coming in and accessing OneDrive and SharePoint, you're going to be doing that through a browser. Now you can see up here, I'm actually accessing this through Google Chrome. I could also be accessing this through Firefox or Safari or, of course, Internet Explorer. Now for the purposes, I'm actually utilizing a demo tenant for this. And you can see up here when I've logged in, it provides me with a demo user profile. In this case, her name is Karen Berg. But when you go ahead and log in, this is the home page, the start screen that you're going to see. So you've got a nice little view down here of all the varying applications that are available to you, as well as you can go up to the top left up here and click on that Rubik's Cube, and it's also going to provide you with those very same applications. So let's look first at OneDrive. Now, if you remember what OneDrive is when I was talking about it in an earlier installment, really what it is is your own personal but it's in business relation file storage. So for example, internally here at CCB, we have our shared file drive, which is our H drive, and we also then have our personal file drive, which we call our G drive. Our G drive in this sense would be very closely related to what OneDrive is. But in the sense of where your OneDrive really is just meant to be a document repository, as that's what most people think, it really actually is able to take it one step further beyond just that basic document repository. It really enables you to not just view those documents, but edit them, send them right from OneDrive to other users, and also collaborate with other users on the same document at the exact same time. So when you're coming into OneDrive, there's a number of things that you can do and that you can see here. And you can see that if this was, for example, my very first time, or let's say I've just done a major download onto my local system and I now want to upload that to OneDrive, I could very easily do that from here and choose whole folders or even just specific files to upload to my OneDrive. From there, if I just want those files to sync back and forth to what's stored locally on my system as well as what's in with OneDrive, I can do that very easily here as well. Another great scenario of why people love OneDrive is, let's say, for example, you're working from home and your home system doesn't actually have the Office applications installed on it, but you need to go in and actually create a new document. Well, right within here, I could very easily go in and create a brand new Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or OneNote document. Now, within that, those are the, some of the document formats that I think can store here within OneDrive, but I can also store things like JPEG images or PDF files all within your OneDrive. So let's say, for example, I've, I'm working from home and I've gone in and I've created a document very quickly, and now I want to be able to do some editing in that document. So there's just a general document that I've got right here, and I'm doing this because I want to show you what the Office applications through the browser actually look like, because a number of people think, is it very basic, is it very remedial? And the truth of the matter is, actually, it's a very robust platform, and for most users, you're really not going to be able to tell the difference between the online version and then the locally installed version that's actually going to be on your system. So right here, in order to edit this, I can choose to edit in Word. Now, in this case, because I have Word installed on my system, it gives me that option. If I didn't have it in installed locally, it wouldn't give me that option. So let's again say for this example, I don't have it installed, and I choose to edit it in Word Online. So now what it's going to do is open up this document, and it's going to enable me to have the ability to edit it right from here. So as you can see within all of this, I can very quickly do much the same that I could if this was the locally installed version that I was utilizing on my system at the time. Now, a great thing here is that if I actually wanted to send this document right from here to another user, I could go right up to the share portion here and click right on that, and I could choose to invite any number of people that I wanted to. The second that I invited them to do that, they would receive an email, and in them receiving an email would have a hyperlink right within there that they would click on, and it would take them to that document. Now, later on in the SharePoint function, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you have multiple users in the same document editing it at the same time. But for this instance, just so it's good for you to know, when you send that document, they're not getting access to your entire folder or your entire OneDrive. They're only getting access to that one specific file, so you can be very selective in what they're utilizing here. Another great thing that you have built in is let's say multiple versions of that document are being made and stored, and you want to be able to see that. Well, you could very quickly click on the ellipses here, which are just those three dots, and again, you see all these different functions that you can utilize, but if I click on versioning history, that's actually going to show me the different versions that were saved and also show me what changes were made and at what date and time.
So it's a very powerful functional tool that really enables you to take it from being just a personal file document repository to being able to be a tool that you can utilize whether you're in the office or out of the office. Now, another thing within this as well that I just want to highlight before I move on is that this really gives you the ability to store a vast number of documents. Because if you remember me communicating in the first installment, you can store up to one terabyte of storage for each user within their OneDrive system. So really your ability to, I would say, maximize this from a personal business relation use is very, very broad. Now let's, let's look here at SharePoint. So again, let's go back up to the Rubik's Cube here and click on, Microsoft calls it Sites, but many people will know it as Microsoft SharePoint. And if we go on here and I click on the home page, what I want to show you is in this instance, this demo user has gone in and their organization has really built out a robust and rich interface type SharePoint site for them. So you can see here it has a number of different features built within it that are very, very user friendly. It's got upcoming events for what's happening within the organization, popular documents that if you have the permissions to it, you have the ability to access any number of users, tied in within your Yammer feed, which is an enterprise social networking platform, you're able to kind of see what's going on and stay up to date, as well as just different things, what emergency procedures might be like, campus mats, so on and so forth, right? And you can see up here, they have this SharePoint site broken down into some of the major departments within the organization, whether it's just general news happening within the organization, HR and careers, operations, sales and marketing, idea exchange, and about the organization itself. So let's say for these purposes here, Karen's within the sales and marketing division within this fictitious company that's called Contoso. She's gone in here and she needs to be able to actually edit a document to make sure that before they go in and present all of that information to the client that it's up to date, right? So where this is stored here within this demo tenant for this different types of documents documents is within their collateral center. So I've gone in, clicked on the collateral center, and now I'm going to go to the collateral document library, which is here is called the L270 campaign. That's the specific one that Karen needs to look at. And she wants to go in and actually specifically look at this campaign messaging matrix. And so she goes in here and clicks right in on that. Now, as you can see here, it's just pulling up what looks like a, a general Excel file for me, right? Well, let's say she wants to go in and edit this now. So she's gone in and clicked that she wants to edit this in Excel online. So what it's going to show here, and I'll pull it over here so that you can see it once I bring in another user. Let's bring them over here so that you can see that, is what it's going to look like when you have multiple users in this document and you're editing it at the same time. So on the right here is a completely separate user from Karen, and they've now gone in and actually started to edit this as well. As well. So one of the things that you can see here is that Karen Berg is listed within this other user as now also someone that's editing this document. And so if I go in here and I click on this and I make a change, and let's just write this as test so that we can see, what you're then going to see populate over here on the left, which is in Karen's profile, is actually that very same document. And so you can see here what uh, um, what cell they're actually in and what you are changes that user is specifically making. You can also see that when I came and logged in, it also showed that I was now logged in. And so really this gives you the ability to be working on the same document at the same time, but it's also recording who's making those changes and what changes they're making and it's saving those versions in case a major change is made and it's quite disastrous and you have to restore back to a previous version. But it really takes that ability of SharePoint to not just be a place where users can come in and interact and see that information, but they can also come in and then collaborate on that information with other users. And we've just seen users within different organizations really take this and make this an effective tool across their organization with whatever it might be because it enables them to properly manage the files within their organization, interact with those files within their organization. But then most importantly, and this is where I think SharePoint really, really shines, collaborate on that information simultaneously with other users in the organization, whether they're in the office or out of the office. So I hope that this brief demo here has given you a really good idea be it ever so quick, of how you can utilize OneDrive and how you can utilize SharePoint within your organization to really enable your organization to increase in their efficiency and productivity. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day.